Hello, listeners and viewers. Welcome to another episode of Invote Talks. This is Fatima Suhail, and today I have amazing Anna Mekwis with us, who is CEO or CEO of Neuroelectronics. Uh, I'm not going to take much more time. Uh, I hope we meet at the deep, uh, but I'm going to start with my first question. So, um, uh, Anna, it's such an honor to have you with us. And how Neuroelectronics is revolutionizing the brain therapy? Yes, thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Well, Neuroelectronics is revolutionizing brain therapy because we've been for years and decades um, working with drugs and pharmaco treatments uh, to deal with diseases related to the brain. But now we think it's a time to look at the brain from a different perspective. And, you know, your brain is electrical as well as chemical. So we are working on trying to decode the brain from an electric perspective and see if we can use electricity to heal the brain. So this is called non-invasive brain stimulation and we aim to become a revolution in terms of how we will deal in the future with epilepsy, depression or Alzheimer's. You must have uh, faced a lot of struggles uh, because I was reading your bio, you are, uh, you ha you are an economist uh, and it must have been a learning curve for you to enter into the technology and uh, build a startup, which is such a unique startup. So uh, for the listeners who are listening out there to us, uh, I want you to tell us um, how did you overcome that learning curve, curve and how did you know that technology was something you want to enter in? Well, I think that it's it's true that in in technology in general we need much more um, a, a much more diverse population. I think it's a pity that the tech uh, world is so uh, ruled by white men. If you think of references in the um, tech space, you always think of Steve Jobs and Elon Musk and so on. And I think that the tech space should open to women and diversity in general. Um, I think the tech is amazing as a tool uh, to deal with some of the most burning issues that humanity has. If you think of climate change, if you think of health, I think that it's a point in which technology will really help us progress. And for that, you need ethical and responsible technology. And I think that's why bringing a diverse group of leaders into tech make a lot of sense. If we think of the pandemic, how hard it was in humanity and how much better it was thanks to technology, it's just an, a very clear example of how tech can be used for good. Yeah. Interesting and amazing. You are completely right that uh, most of the technology world uh, is ruled by men. And uh, I am completely agreeing with you on this point, dude, that whenever we think of examples, we come across uh, Steve Jobs and other people. Uh, it is rare to come across a woman. Uh, so uh, it is such an inspiring thing. And I was looking at your startup. We would love to meet you in person at leave. Uh, we will be at uh, Hole 5 F30 stand. Uh, are you exhibiting or uh, you are as, I know you are as a speaker invited there, but are you, is Neuroelectronics exhibiting there? No, we are not. We are only speaking um, at LEAP and we are super looking forward uh, to speak uh, in LEAP. Oh, that's amazing. So we would love to meet you. Um, we can set up a call or something or you can come at our stand. Uh, coffee is reserved from our side for you. Of course. I love coffee. So I'll, I'll <laughs> come and see you. So you should remember our uh, stand number. It's F30. <laughs> okay. Our team in Wazon will be there. Uh, so, um, Anna, I was uh, actually checking out the LEAP website and it was like you were speaking on AI, neuroelectronics, uh, neuroscience and ethics. Uh, and the question that came in my mind was like, uh, what is the role of ethics? Uh, in neurology um, uh, and I must say neuroscience and why is it so important? I know you're going to speak uh, over there in LEAP, but just point us for our audience. Uh, yeah, I think it's a great question. I think that one of the things that I'm fascinated as, a, as the leader of a neurotech company is that we are dealing with the brain in ways we have never been possible before, right? So if you think of technologies to deal with your heart, with your you know, body in general, I think that the ethical questions of dealing with your heart or with your kidney is not the same as dealing with your brain. The brain is what makes us human. 
is what defines us as human. And I do believe that, um, you know, developing technologies to interface with the brain need to have an ethical view. So that's why my company is very involved in ethical debate. Because the moment these technologies um, can alter the way uh, humans decide or humans think is another dimension. My technology is non-invasive, meaning you can take the cap out anytime. But if you think of companies that are implanting chips in the mm. brain, that's another dimension. If we think of all the things that happen during social media and you know the way that you know Facebook and others um, were driving opinions uh, in the political debate. Imagine when you don't even have that interface, when you know companies can directly access your brain. I think that there needs to be a lot of regulation on one side to make sure that the data extracted from the brain belongs to the subject and who has used to that uh, <laughs> brain data. And the second, a certain control of the companies that are stimulating or interacting with the brain. So I think that it's a matter of regulation, but also a matter of the companies being responsible and making sure that they're protecting human. And, and that's why I think that it's really important to really start to think, you know, 30 years from now, when a lot of people will have a brain implanted, you know, what are the social consequences of that? Hmm. Yeah. I agree that uh, it is important that the data of the person the brain uh, should be for the person and the second point you said. So coming back towards LEAP, uh, what are you expecting from the LEAP? I know that they are going to be uh, anybody that who is going out there, he is expecting um, social networking, um, meeting new people. Uh, but what are you expecting? And also uh, the how uh, events like LEAP uh, are portraying the fact that the Arab land is changing in terms of technology, especially for women? Well, I think I'm very interested uh, coming from Europe, having developed a lot of my career in the United States. I'm very curious to see what's going on in Saudi Arabia. I mean, we know Saudi Arabia has its um, issues in terms of women. So I think it's very important to bring a tech event in Saudi Arabia and in my case, show um, to the society there how women are leading this revolution across the world and hopefully inspiring other women and the governments to really um, open their minds to diversity in all fronts. So, you know, I think that one of my role is to learn from um, the situation in Saudi Arabia, but also to really be an advocate um, for diversity and women leaders in tech. Amazing, amazing. Thank you so much for being with us. It was such an honor um, that you came and took your time for us. Thank you so much. My pleasure and hope to see you in Riyadh. <laughs> and my team in Wazon is going to be there. Thank you so much. Looking forward to. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you.